Today I'm going to show you how to upgrade your RAM module in your QNAP server. It's This one is specifically the TS431X2, as they say in the business. You're supposed to hold the power button for 1.5 seconds to turn it off. I held it for 5 seconds, but it still worked. So it just took like a minute or two to shut off, so now you see everything's off. There's a couple other models that work this similar way. There's actually a couple that, in my opinion, are probably better and easier because on the bottom they have uh, just a little door, an access door for the RAM slot, but you have to take this whole thing apart. It starts out, or at least the model we got started out with two gigs of RAM, which, you know, doesn't seem like a ton. You know, it doesn't need much, but for we're doing like video editing and stuff off of it, so we're gonna boost it up. We, we've, we've been having some issues on and off with this, some related to being over the storage capacity, uh, which I have another video about, I guess. Uh, I think increasing the RAM will just help, um, especially like accessing smaller files. Hopefully it can kind of put more of them into RAM and access them quicker. It's in our server room, which was uh, is pretty dusty, it seems. And also, and I'm out of canned air at the moment, so I'm gonna try to wipe it off real quick. Uh, also, our old studio was like a warehouse and it was filthy, so it could be left over from that too. But. A little bath never hurt anybody. So I'm sure we'll, I would recommend having some canned air, but I'm sure we'll see more. So the first step is to remove all the drives. An important note is to remember the order at which you pulled them out from. So I'm going to start with one on the left and then two, three, four to the right, like I'm reading a book. So I'm going to do that. So you just take this and break it. You pull that latch and then you pull the drive out. So that's drive number one. And it's, so Hunter, uh, who does a lot of this stuff, my cousin, business partner, and you know, whatever, guy, all around great guy. Uh, he already labeled this one, so he's pretty smart. So that's gonna save me from making a terrible mistake. So we've got two. And so we've got 12 ter, I actually thought we had 10 terabytes. We have 12 terabyte. Iron Wolf drives in here, um, which gives us 32 terabytes. Did I say gigabytes? I meant whatever, you know what I mean. It gives us 32 terabytes of usable storage, which is great. I usually have an iFixit kit with me. I think Hunter might have it on the thing he's doing. He's doing his motorcycle race. So I just have a screw regular screwdriver. It'll be great. So on the back here, there are four screws not the ones that are, not the screws that are on the fan here, but there's four screws on the case itself. So we're gonna remove those four screws to get at the inside. So we're going to do this. Yeah. So I'd recommend actually using a smaller, this is like a decently small screwdriver, but for these, if you can find your iFixit kit or something similar, I'm kind of risking stripping these a, a little bit. I'll just check it out and make sure it's good. Yeah, we're good. But it, it was just a little little funky. So just uh, if you have a smaller screwdriver, I'd use it. But we're on a tight schedule today, so we're just going to send it. So another thing to remember, too, is just to keep your screws organized. There's not too many screws here, um, but, you know, we're just going to try. So there's our screws there. This thinner piece will stay, can, and you can kind of see that actually based on the screws, um, but this like plastic piece here will stay. So in theory, this whole thing should pop off like this if it's not angry. There it is, okay. So it just pops out and then in theory, you just kind of, oh, it comes up. So it, it pops like that way and then up. So there's that. It's mildly dirty in here, so we're just gonna keep doing a little a little wipe off. All right, so now you've got it open here. There are six screws that hold this drive bay chassis thing. You can see the drives connect in here. Um, it, there's six screws that connect. Okay, this one's, this is working, so we're in good shape. It's just a little chonky. It's gonna be hard to get on the side here but we'll make it work. So keep all your screws organized. So we're in good shape. Just get an iFixit kit that's normal. I have another one somewhere, but it's, it's all gone. OK, 
Okay. This is working good though, so we're in good shape. Okay, so those two screws are out. If you can see that, they're not in there. And these are all the same size, which is good. <laughs> so you got two more screws here. I'm gonna try to do it to camera a little bit so you can really see. There's one. And then. There's two. Um, now in theory, so that's six total screws and in theory this thing should pop off here. At some point in the process I missed two screws. So there's two screws right here in the front that I think are holding it together. So. And I'm gonna put these screws, oh, do they match more of that? I don't know, these look more like these screws. So. Okay, now the moment of truth, folks. This, voila. You can really see where the, the heat of the processor on the heat sink goes up against this. It's got a big old mark. So here is the uh, connection that goes into the motherboard from the drives. Um, yeah, and here's like the motherboard and everything. I just hit the mic as hard as you can. So we got that off. So that was actually eight screws, I think, but that's okay. We're having fun. So now there's your stick of RAM. That's what we're going to be replacing. So I got this one off of eBay. It was labeled for this specific server. Uh, it came from the UK. They would never lie to me, so I feel good. I'm going to just double check you know, some of the numbers on it and see if it, I, I know it is matching from a spec standpoint, so it should work, but you know, we'll see. Opening the bag may have been the toughest part of this so far. Okay, so we've got eight gigabytes of DDR3, 1600 megahertz. And then this is two gigabytes, 1600. So that brand is Transcend. This is some other sh it doesn't really, I don't know exactly what brand it is, but we're going to see if it works. And if it doesn't work, the worst case, we just take it apart. So uh, if you can see here on the close-up camera, there's two like kind of clippy dudes on the side of here. So you want to release those and then that lifts the ram up and then it just comes right out like that. So the sticks look pretty identical. So you just want to take your ram stick and you kind of like put it in on an angle. So you kind of pull it out on an angle. You want to put it in on an angle and then just push it forward and it'll just latch in right there. So we'll just do it one more time. So I'm releasing it, just taking the two parts there. It leans forward. So same idea, putting it in, you kind of do that and then it just slides right in. So that's really all it is. Um, it'd be way easier if it had that bottom access on it, but you know, it wasn't so bad. It only took a couple, couple hours here, not really, but <laughs> to do it. Uh, I'm just going to hit it with a little more t tissue paper and it's actually not that dirty. It could be way worse. There was just a lot of dust sitting on top of it. So yeah, I would say that was pretty easy. I hope it uh, works so I don't have to do this all over again. Um, and I'll link below uh, the RAM on Amazon and on eBay and you can take your try your luck here and see what works. But yeah, if you're doing this, get some canned air ahead of time. and spray it off just while you got it open. It's a good time to clean it. So now we're just gonna do everything we just did in reverse. So you can see on the motherboard, if you're confused, this is where your, it's probably PCIe, honestly. I don't know that for a fact, but it looks like PCIe. So uh, you look for your PCIe slot to match up to here. Then that just goes, if you got that claim, mm -hmm. is that, are you able to see that a little bit? Mm -hmm. So that goes right in that slot and it just slides in. So now we've got all our screws that uh, we're holding that chassis together. So those are all together. We're just gonna put these ones back on first on the front here, cause that's the last ones we did. So learn how to use a screwdriver is step one. It's, it's the hardest part really.
and having a screwdriver is the hardest part. Screwing in the front. Okay. So same deal. We got two screws up top, two on the side, two on the other side. So I'll just do the top ones first, just because it's easier to get to. These are tiny little fellas. Yeah, having the right screwdriver would make this like 10 times easier. So, you know, they say it's having the right tools for the job is important, but it's not, if you're, if you're dumb enough, you can do it with anything. Okay, same deal here, just screwing that in. Okay, same deal on the other side. Okay, and one more screw. So eight total, just in this cage. Really nice thing about the iFixit is it's got this nice thing here that allows you to spin the thing without having to move the whole deal. It's nice. Okay, so that's good. We're in good shape there. So we've got four screws left. So those will be for the cage. So if you look at it, I mean, at the front obviously has that on it, but whatever. So I'm just gonna try to actually. So yeah, it just kind of slides back on like that. So there is like, if you look real close here, there's a lock like on the thing here. So you can see that when you have it slid that way, it's unlocked. And then as you pull it towards you, it locks. So now it's in the lock position. So unlock and then pull up and then lock is there. So if you pull up on it, it's not gonna do anything right now. So that's kind of obvious, I guess, or makes it more obvious if you can see that on the camera, hopefully. But yeah, so now it's back together and we're gonna put the drive bays back in. We're gonna actually wipe out this just a little bit. It's just got a little schmutz on the inside here. Canned air, once again, would have been great, but it wasn't in the budget for this shoot, so we're good. Okay. So you take your drives. Um, if you're worried about the direction in which you put them in or you forgot, it's this way. And that's like the unlocking mechanism. And you can also tell by looking at the connector on the back and matching it up with the inside connector. So we slide that in and this comes down actually to let that in. So leave that out and then slide it up and now it's in there nice. So we're gonna release this. If you can see on camera, there's actually like a tab here that's going up and clicking that in to lock it in place. So if you keep it down, it's not gonna wanna go in. You could snap that off. So keep it up like that and go in. Same with this, same deal. Just having it out a little bit. There we go. And same deal here. Here we go. And then we still got uh, four screws on the back here that connect the case. Um, you might want to just go see if it works first. I'm just going to trust my work here and yeah, it's really good work. Um, trust my work here and hope that this just goes in. So I don't have to take it all apart again. That's working. It seems angry. I'll try a different one. Okay, so we got our four screws on the back and those are just holding this plasticky cover thing on. God forbid we forget those, we'd be in big trouble. I would never do that. Okay, now it's all put back together. Everything's in it. Let's go plug it in and see if it works. All right, so we're gonna put it back in. 
All right, so it showed up. Um, we're going to check it out here. So we're going to go to control panel. It's thinking, let's see. So now we got eight gigabytes of usable RAM. So we did it. It's that easy, folks. You just see it right there. And hopefully we get some better performance out of it. So if you have any questions, let me know. And yeah, we'll see you next time. Power of editing. It's gonna be great.